So, uh, this ETA of Kenya, Electronic Tra Travel Authorization, mm -hmm. um, previously, look, we thought it was a scam. Ruto did this great speech. He was like, um, people of Kenya, we are the greatest and we welcome you. And then now we see it is not even in effect anymore. The, the government has pressed pause. What's going on? Why have they paused the ETA? Why are we back to applying through the normal old ways? So uh, the reason why ETA was delayed is number one, when we transformed to the electronic uh, traveling authorization, the, we expected that the tourists will adapt uh, from a few 1,000 to 5,000 to 10,000. But that is not the case, which is very positive because all our tourists and investors who are coming to Kenya, they believed in the system immediately. So within the first four days of the launch of the ETA website, there was a lot of traffic and there was a lot of workload. And the government had already promised tourists and people traveling to Kenya that within 72 hours, we'll be able to clear. And due to this traffic and workload, it led to the slowdown of the system. And, and it had it pushed the government to revise the the whole system to upgrade it. Those who've done software engineering and developing the developers they understand it. They had to upgrade it to have a bigger server that can serve the backlog and a lot of traffic of the applicants we are receiving every day. And the other reason was also to revise the the terms that they're given to travelers that within 72 hours you're being verified, but now it is pushed to 14 days, which is fair because uh, within 72 hours, it will strain the people working there because now there's a lot of traffic. But within 14 days, they'll get enough time to do to collect all the data they need and see the response of these people for the question they've been asked and verify them. So this really was a scam because 14 days, that's, the, that's how long it took before for the visa anyway. So what really has happened is they just made an electronic visa. Um, no, it's not a scam. Number two, the visa had, you had high chances that you cannot come to Kenya because you're being asked some questions which are very personal. Uh, in this ETA system, the questions are standardized they are respectful and they're not emotionally attached that you wouldn't end up answering rudely or wrongly because you feel like someone is attacking your feeling. So that is number one. Number two, it has also, it will also open a lot of uh, opportunities for young investors who want to come and peruse the Kenyan market and African market generally before they decide if they want to invest here because they're not being restricted like initially. So this is more workable. And the third one, as you all know that Kenya is the leading country in matters of technology and innovation, and Nairobi is the leading city in the African continent. So it will just be a complementary that most of our working system will be digitized because we are known as the innovative and digital hub of Africa. And what will be the best way then doing most of government things. Remember, initially last year, the government has transferred all services over 10,000 to be digitized. That if you want to apply for a company, you just apply from the comfort of your home using your phone or your laptop. Taking a national ID now in our government, you don't really have to have a physical ID. You can download an electronic identification card and you use it. There's so many uh, services I think the remaining ones are around 200, which are not up, uh, put into the, the system. So yes, that is the journey that Kenya is, is pushing for, and we call it generally digital superhighway, whereby we are digitizing all services, government services, or rather most of them. Because even in the Ministry of Health, we are digitizing medical services that if you have an headache, you can be able to talk with a, a virtual doctor and explain your signs and symptoms. And then they will prescribe to you and you just go to a, a nearest pharmacist or a, a nearest clinic to your home and pick the medicine. This one reduces the cost of traveling, saves your time, 
and saves lives because now it is easier compared to waiting for an ambulance with sometimes if you are in the rural areas, the roads are not bearable, especially during rainy season and lives are safe. So that is the whole process and transportation, of course, the airport and visa is the same. Okay, so um, in terms of Kenya, I think it is a better system to uh, digitize things. However, President Ruto did exaggerate how better the system is for other people. Well, Kenya, I agree with you, everything you said. This takes us to the next level of uh, revolution, tech revolution. However, what about for black Americans who thought that they would just be able to book a flight uh, and arrive in Kenya the next day? That's what they ha people had in their minds. Do you think that they should still come to Kenya? Yes. Now that you've actually said it's extended from 72 hours to now 14 days. And I think I understand it's, it's a it's not a fully automated system. There mm. is still a human um, yeah, interpretation. Yeah, because the human have to prove and, and read between the lines. If you've done intelligence or rather each government has their own national intelligence. They read between the lines. I'm someone who is a criminal might answer street just like someone who is not a criminal. But there is a way they write words like coded words, which, uh, as you know, Kenya is an ally of the USA. They can easily learn from the servers of what they're being trained and the like. This person answer this way is part of a gang, in as much as they don't have history of crime, and it can be easily to help to keep the world secure by waiting for them in the airport, put them behind bars, call the FBI to take the gun. So it's, it has to have human in it because security for every country is the priority number one. Okay, so now that it's moved from 72 hours to 14 days, should black Americans... Uh, yes, because actually 14 days is the maximum. 72 hours is the least. So yes, if your name is on top of the list of Let's say people who have applied today, there are 20,000. And name number one is Black American called Susan. So Susan has a chance that within 72 hours, and the top 100, they'll be approved within 72 hours, or rather the top 1,000. Then the remaining, they'll be approved the next other 72 hours or the next 48 hours. So yes, the minimum time is 72 hours. The maximum time is 14 days. So yes, black Americans wants to come to Kenya. Just make sure that if you're planning to come, for example, for Valentine's, then just do it right now so that you don't get pressure of like, oh, I haven't received the feedback. So that you, you just start. Uh, and again, something that you should know. First, you apply to your hotel room and buy your ticket. So an advice to everyone that wants to come to Kenya uh, to tour our great Masai Mara, or and learn more cultures, the coastal culture, the Swahili culture, the Maasai culture, and also learn about investment opportunities. So listen to this. The first thing you should do, that is the change from the old system to this one. First of all, you book the hotel room and the airport because you'll be asked and you have to upload that information. Then after you book it, you come now and apply for the ITA. So this means that also in the system, it can actually detect those, uh, those who have taken a ticket, a flight ticket that is urgent or it is closer compared to those who are coming after two months. You, you're getting my point. But the serviest thing that we always been told, better earlier than last minute rush. So if you're coming to Kenya for Valentine's, you should start applying for it now so that you have enough time within 72 hours or, or two days or three days, you get your feedback back and then the anxiety part will, will disappear. So yes, we still call upon our uh, black Americans who wants to come and buy lands here, buy homes here, invest here, live here. There is a very, very huge chance, 99% probable chance that you will just come within the time you wanted and you'll be taken through everything that you want. Um, just uh, as I finish about, um, uh, tourists and investors coming here. You have seen this uh, musician who is a songwriter. She came and, and she was just walking around in the CBD between my tattoos. She was a little bit scared, but eventually she adapted. She was driving around using Uber and taking pictures and videos. I think most of you have seen it. That is how secure Kenya is. That is how beautiful it is. No one was even bothering her. She was carrying an iPhone 14 Pro Max in her hand. She was also, I think, testing whether our city is secure. 
no one robbed her, which is yours during the day. Of course, during the day, everyone is secure. You're, you're not secure even in the most powerful country in the world, which is USA. At night, we all know that. At night, bad things happen. So as long as you are during the day and even at night you are in right places, no one bothers you in Kenya. But if you find yourself past 10 p.m. in ghetto areas, that is where you can, you can be marked. But otherwise, our security is top notch. Okay, um, that sounds good. So what is the future of um, Kenya and, and visas? First of all, you said, is the price still the same as the ATA originally? Is it $30? Yeah. Around 4,500 shillings, right? $30, let's just use the dollar valuation. It's $30, it used to be $65, and now it's $30. And you could, you, initially you could pay the $65 and there is high chances you are not even given that visa. But right now, there is a profitable of 99.9% .9 that you pay your $30, you'll get to come to Kenya, as long as you don't have criminal history. Now, here's another question. Uh, you mentioned earlier that uh, you want them to buy a ticket first. Does that make sense? So you, a ticket costs like uh, over $1,000, maybe $1,500 for a return ticket. So someone is going to spend uh, $1,500 on a return ticket, book a hotel or Airbnb to prove that this is where they'll be staying. And then what if they get rejected? No, that's why I've told you the probability of getting rejected is less than 0.1%. Unless you have criminal records. As I said earlier, the system is very fair and very open. And the reason why the president made this is to let everyone come back home. Remember, Kenya, yeah, he said that Kenya is a cradle of you. Yes, yes. So when you're coming home, you don't have to be restricted as long as you don't have criminal record. That the only reason why you are not allowed to come to Kenya using the ETA system is if your name or your picture for your passport flags out that you are part of the uh, drug dealers, uh, firearm people who are criminal, or you staff the interest of wanted individuals. You're getting my point. Like for example, I mean that if he was alive, he won't come to Kenya, but he can send someone who we don't know. But if there's a connect that the security finds it out, then you won't be allowed. So as long as you're not in that bracket, you will get the eater. I promise you that. Okay, we'll see. We'll see. And then I also just check the website for Immigration Kenya. You will get all the information there. You get to read, understand, and please avoid listening to blogs. Bloggers are just writing whatever they want to write to get views. But the truth is the system is working. Kenya is very secure. And you just come and see for yourself. Not only Kenya, most of African countries are very secure. But what you see in CNN and those other medias which just want to put Africa to be backwards to be uncivilized is what the truth the truth is we are the most civilized people because even our traditional system were the most civilized before the white turned it to to disregard us our cultures because people without a culture are useless they're brainwashed that's what they did don't 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 also get into that side come experience the freedoms in your motherland, Kenya and Africa. So Thank why do you think uh, black Americans are only coming to Kenya now? We've seen a lot of them on uh, tick uh, YouTube, TikTok, uh, now they're beginning to do it. How come in the, all this time it was white people coming to Kenya to tour? Why are black people only coming now? Yeah, so first of all, remember, black people thought they'll get rejection because most of them used to think West Africa is secure. So when they went to Nigeria and those countries, Ghana. Ghana, they were they felt like it's a competition. South Africa, especially, they were so much discriminated because they felt like you guys are, f are more like serving the interests of the white. You are coming to compete against our works, our opportunities. And they sent bad. They were like, we can't go back to Africa because they don't want us. But in Kenya, you know very well, Kenya is the most diversified cultural country in the whole of Africa. Because as we speak, there are places in Kenya we know it is for South Sudanese. There are places we know they are for Somalis, they are for Ethiopians, and it is part of Kenya. And none of the Kenyans will ever make them feel like this is not home to them. As long as you're not committing crimes, Kenya are the most welcoming people. And I think the world has just learned that every other day. And, they, and also, the other major reason is that, obviously, you'll go where the economy is most stable, 
more peaceful and where technology has advanced. Kenya is not only ranked as the best innovative and um, techy city, uh, which is Nairobi, it is also ranked to be the best investment destination in Africa. Out of the 200 countries that were ranked towards Christmas, Kenya was position 63 and position one in Africa continent. That is a lot of potential that if you can start your business here in Kenya, a startup, it has high, high chances of, of succeeding, especially if that there were people who have grown up in the white, they are more tech savvy. They know how to use technology to be an enabler of most businesses, be it agribusiness, be it uh, uh, modeling. So they have a high chance of success here in Kenya more than in the USA. Okay, interesting. So there is potential for them to grow and add value to the Kenyan economy. Yeah, and also just make a lot of wealth for themselves. Because... Oh, so you're a capitalist. You believe people should be self-interested when they come to Africa, not just to give Africans back, but to also benefit themselves. Uh, no, I believe that in Kenya, we don't need donations. Oh, okay. So you don't even want donations. You want them to come here and... Well, we want them to come and partner with us. We have very brilliant young people with brilliant ideas. Some of them are at the seed funding level. Some of them are pre-seed. Some of them are startups. Some of them want to scale up, but they lack capital because these white people come here and, and they are like, you're too young. What is your collateral? How much dollars do you have in a bank? We don't have dollars in the bank, but we have a lot of land. We have a lot of cows. We have knowledge, you know? So what we are asking all investors who want to come to Kenya, be it the whites, be it the blacks, be it the Asians, is we need partnership, investment, venture, uh, jo jo joint venture, or you invest in terms of equity to these brilliant minds and brilliant st startups. We don't want donations. Donation is what has kept Africa behind for the last 60 years. And this generation has to make this change by starting to appreciate that you partner with someone, they put in money, you put in the skill and the energy and the business side, and then you are equals. You build an empire. That is what we want. We don't want donation anymore. We want partnership. Okay, um, I think that makes sense. So what do you, th what do you see in this whole um, Kenya visa um, ETA? Do you think it will actually increase uh, tourism into the country and get us more foreign exchange? Yeah, so far, this month, you remember during, since COVID, the Masai Mara, which is now, usually gives the country the highest FDI. Right. They're followed by the hotel, the hotel industry and tourism followed by agriculture. So since COVID, Masai Mara did not recover fully. As you know, Masai Mara is the biggest tourist destination for all our foreigners and, and visitors. So this month alone, I come from Narok where Masai Mara lives. I was checking at the Masai Mara report of the hotels and the revenue collection. The country is getting back to where it was before COVID. That means there's so many foreigners coming and they're taking money to the hotels. They're paying for the park. They're buying our artifacts, the Maasai stuff, because all those are part of what makes life better and what brings revenue. So yeah, it will increase investors and tourists, for sure. Okay, okay, so you see hope in this whole it Yes, I see hope in both that, beside even the system of Kenya, there's a lot of hope because being run as top of 54 countries is not an easy thing. Again, we are not South Africa whereby uh, most white put energy and resources. That is just, I really want people to come to Kenya and know like, you know, sometimes people say on social media, oh, Kenyans are just, some white guys are doing this for them, some Asians. I want you guys to come and see that all this is just by your blacks, us. But we don't have some Asians or what Asians do or, or, or Americans or what is just fun, donate, which those donations don't reach to these people who are innovative actually. So it is just us. So I we need these people who have doubting minds of whether it is really black thing or it's just being maneuvered by the white to come and see for themselves that it's entirely purely black. Yeah. Um... That's a great point there, but... Uh... Thank you very much. Kindly subscribe to our channel.